Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here or at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and today I'm wearing my Dropkick Murphys kind of t-shirt trying to have the edgy look about me basically being a dropkick because that's what I am. Anyway, today's book is Kate Morton's The Clockmaker's Daughter. Have you read this book? What do you think? Look how big it is. Now, Kate Morton is an Australian author and the people out there who have read any of Kate Morton's books, you've got to steer me on the right path here. Has she written all books about this size? About 585 pages, multiple storylines, multiple personalities, multiple characters, multiple, multiple everything. Um, <laughs> now, why did I pick up this book? Well, I saw it on our library website and we were in lockdown and I thought I really need to read a book. Kate Morton sounded interesting. I had no idea that she was an Australian author, but I do remember this book two years ago being on bookshelves and being on bestseller lists. So I thought, well, okay, I'm really quick off the mark. Two years later, I decided to read this. <laughs> And I'm glad I did, admittedly. Now, I haven't read a book this size for um, for a while, actually. And I, whenever I do see the sizes of books, I'm in, I'm, I'm in two minds. Because I think I want to be sucked into a story and I want to be sucked into a story quickly. I don't want it to drag on because look, look at the size. You don't want to... You don't want to feel as if you're wasting your time on, on uh, reading a book. But I must admit, I really like this book. It opens up with a voice. It's a ghostly voice. Um, it's the voice of Lily Millington, who lived in the 1860s. And it's really her story, but her story in amongst different uh, stories told by different people across multiple timelines. Now, the multiple timelines I'm talking about um, the 1860s, then the 1900s, then the 1940s to the 1960s, and then to the 2017. And in between all those timelines, as you can imagine, there are different people somehow connected to each other, therefore different perspectives, therefore different viewpoints of a situation uh, that happened in the 1860s. Now, what is that situation that happened? Let me read you the blurb so um, you could get the context. My real name, no one remembers. The truth about that summer, no one else knows. In the summer of 1862, a group of young artists led by the passionate and talented Edward Radcliffe descends upon Birchwood Manor on the banks of the Upper Thames. Okay, so there's a spooky house in this. Well, it's not really spooky. Well, there's a ghost. Anyway, a nice manor. Uh, their plan is to spend a secluded summer month in a haze of inspiration and creativity. But by the time their stay is over, one woman has been shot dead while another had disappeared. A priceless heirloom is missing and Edward Radcliffe's life is in ruins. So you can imagine young bohemian types with boater hats and stripy vests and ladies in the long dresses with wonderful hair and you know artist type um, that kind of thing anyway 150 years later Elodie Winslow this is around 2017 now is a young archivist in London she uncovers a leather satchel containing two seemingly unrelated items a sepia photograph of an arresting looking young Victorian woman in Victorian clothing and an artist sketchbook containing the drawing of the twin gabled house on the bend of the river, Birchwood Manor. Why does Birchwood Manor feel so familiar to Elodie? And who is this beautiful woman in the photograph? Will she ever give up her secrets? Told by multiple voices across time, The Clockmaker's Daughter is a story of murder, mystery, thievery, art, love and loss. And flowing through its pages like a river is the voice of a woman who stands outside of time and whose name had been forgotten by history, but who has watched it all unfold. That's Birdie Bell, the clockmaker's daughter. So who is Birdie Bell? I'm not going to tell you because that'll be giving away the secrets of this book. Now, this book has got everything in it. It's got love and loss, romance, murder, mystery, tragedy, grief. Grief is a big one. Um, happiness. It's got... Um, 
But, oh, but man, there are so many people in this book. I had to create a mind map. You can see it here. And these are just, you can't, well, anyway, trust me, there's a mind map here with a lot of characters. And I haven't even, I haven't even written all of them. These are just the main characters. So because it is jumping from 1860s to the 1900s to the 1940s, 1960s to 2017, th there are times when I was reading this book and I was thinking, man, who's this person? How they connected to, um, to a Lodi or to Lily? Uh, what's going on? Um, and there were just elements of the story that I must admit I got lost initially. But until I sat down and wrote my mind map, it um, it then came together. In the last hundred pages, though, in the last hundred pages, all those links, all those uncertainties, all the questions that I had were really pulled together quite quickly. And you saw it all unfold. And all of a sudden, all the jigsaw pieces started to fall into place. And so the last hundred pages of this book, I just finished like quite quickly because I just wanted to know how all those pieces of the puzzle fitted. So initially, even though I did read this book, it took me um, less than a week to, to read this. It wasn't a book that I wanted to pick up straight away and just get into it every single night. Um, it was like, yeah, okay, I'll read a chapter, so forth. But once you started reading, it did, it did suck you in, okay? So, and I really liked the character of Elodie as well. She was very uh, memorable and um, and Lily, Lily too, which was quite tragic what happened to her, um, but I'm not gonna say anymore. So this book is a really interesting book to read. If you like uh, books that are uh, quite in depth, and like I said, have multiple characters spanning across timelines. And you don't get confused with the storylines moving in and out of uh, different timelines. Then I'd say give Kate Morton, a clockmaker's daughter, a go. One of the things this book reminded me of, especially the, the parts where uh, Lily, the ghost, was saying her story, was there's a show on ABC iView made by the the team of Horrible Histories. I don't know if you ever watched the Horrible Histories, a very funny show. Um, they've created this new series called Ghosts and they live in this manner and they are ghosts and they, they try and interact with the humans that, uh, that, that are living in that house. It's all ours. What did that girl just say? She must be related to you. Like a news. That kind of reminded me <laughs> of this book for some reason. Not that this is funny, it wasn't funny, but just the fact of ghosts trying to interact with the humans coming at the house. The um, other thing I would say is that if you have read any of Kate Morton's books, uh, let me know how you find them because I, yeah, I wouldn't... I'd entertain the thought of reading more Kate Morton's books, especially if they were like this. So let me know if you've read her books. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, share your comments below. Let me know what you think. And bye for now.